ethoxide, not the portion with the ethoxide associated with it as our product. It's going to be this. All right. So keep that in mind. Go ahead and attempt some of these problems. Let me know what you get or if you're having trouble and we can work them out together in a different video as well if you need it. All right. But with that being said, with those two practice problems out of the way, let's discuss something really cool called conjugate addition reactions. First, first we want first we're going to be talking about Michael addition. Now, this is going to be a lot of information. All right. It's going to be a lot of information, but the problems are really simple. So I guess that's the plus side. So hang in there. We're going to start from the beginning. All right. Recall that the product of an aldol condensation reaction, right, is that alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone, right? At the alpha beta position for aldol condensation, ultimately we form that double bond through the condensation process. Now, aldehydes and ketones that possess that alpha beta unsaturation, that double bond at the alpha beta position, they exhibit a unique reactivity at that beta position. And what we're going to do now is we're going to explore that reactivity at the beta position. All right. Now, the beta position is reactive because it's going to operate as an electrophilic center similar to that of the carbon in the carbonyl. All right. This beta position in our alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone, all right, is susceptible to being attacked and a variety of nucleophiles can be used to attack that beta position all right the process involves an attack at the beta position followed by protonation to give an enol the enol is going to rapidly tautomerize to form a carbonyl group you can see this right here all right some sort of nucleophile will attack the beta position of our alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde here all right it's going to attack at this reactive beta position it's going to add itself there as a consequence the double bond is going to move here and then this double bond between the carbon and oxygen it'll dump its electrons on the oxygen and look at that we get an enolate all right now you can treat it with an acid to protonate the uh, oxygen here all right but this molecule is going to tautomerize to give us this final product all right, where ultimately we've preserved, we've preserved the carbonyl, we lost the double bond, but we've added some group at the beta position. All right, so this is going to be very useful. All right, now this type of reaction is called a conjugate addition, also known as a 1-4 addition. Why? Because you have added something at the 1 and 4 position here. All right, that hydrogen being added here and a nucleophile being added here. And if you count one, two, three, four, all right, you're adding something at the one position and you're adding something at the four position, hence one for addition or conjugate addition, right? Because the nucleophile and proton have added across the ends of a conjugated pi system. Now, what if we just used an enolate as a nucleophile to attack an alpha beta ketone or and or aldehyde all right well here both one two addition and one four addition are observed and you're going to get a mixture of products all right now if we have a molecule all right that is maybe doubly stabilized all right doubly stable stabilized enolates are going to be sufficiently stabilized to just produce the one four conjugate addition exclusively let's elaborate 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 on this all right if we have a molecule that's deprotonated to form a doubly stabilized enolate ion this is that's going to serve as a nucleophile all right in a one for conjugate addition reaction then this process is called a michael reaction the doubly stabilized enolate all right the doubly stabilized enolate is known as a michael donor Okay, while the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde is known as a Michael acceptor. All right, so let's restate that now. Doubly stabilized enolates, like this, for example, all right, they're going to serve, they can serve as a nucleophile, nucleophile in a 1 4 conjugate addition, like we just saw here. Okay, this process is called a Michael reaction. 
What's happening here is this doubly stabilized enolate is known as a Michael donor, while something that is a alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde or ketone is known as a Michael acceptor, and these can react together via a Michael addition reaction. Okay, so ultimately, look at this starting material. This is a doubly stabilized molecule, right? Because if it gets deprotonated here, now you have a negative charge. Beautiful. Now this is your Michael donor, right? Doubly stabilized. All right, this right here, alpha, beta, unsaturation, there's a double bond between the alpha, beta. All right, beautiful. This is our Michael acceptor. These two will react through Michael, a Michael addition reaction or a Michael reaction. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add this all right, we're going to add this to this. How are we going to do that? Well, let's erase all these lines and see it at play. What's going to happen here, all right, what's going to happen here is this point right here is going to add to this point right here. All right, the beta position of our Michael acceptor will add to the place that we've deprotonated on our Michael donor. There will be a bond that forms between the two. That's this bond right here, all right? As a consequence of forming this bond right here, we have to lose the unsaturation here at the double bond, okay? By the way, this methyl group is just this methyl group here. We don't forget about it, right? We've just formed this bond between the two, so this methyl group is just drawn in addition to that. All right, so we've added these two molecules together through Michael reaction. Let's do some more practice problems, all right? This problem says, identify the major product formed when each of the following compounds is treated with um, this copper uh, catalyst right here, okay? Fantastic, we know how to do this, okay? So really quickly, this is going to serve as our um, reagent that's going to tell us what kind of group we're adding here. All right, it's going to serve to tell us what kind of group we're adding here. Ultimately, what we're adding here is this ethyl group, okay? This reagent, this copper lithium catalyst, whatever's attached to it is what, is, what it's telling us will be added at the beta position of our Michael acceptor, all right? So we have the starting material, all right? Look at our starting material A, all right? It's an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. It's obviously going to act as our Michael acceptor, okay? Now the reagent, uh, lithium diethyl cuprate, I believe, uh, it's going to function as our Michael donor, Okay, and what we can expect from this is this group, this R group that's attached to the copper lithium uh, complex, that is what's being added to the beta position. So we're installing an ethyl group at the beta position. What does that mean our product looks like? Our product is going to look like we preserve the carbonyl, of course, but we lose the double bond because we're adding an ethyl group here. All right, fantastic. Let's do B together as well. All right, what we have, the starting material, all right, is an alpha beta unsaturated ester. Okay, this is going to function as our Michael acceptor. All right, our reagent, again, same thing. We're going to, is going to be functioning as our Michael donor. Okay, what that means is at the beta position, again, we're going to be adding an ethyl group. All right, so preserve our C in here and we're adding an ethyl group here. All right, go ahead and attempt to see yourself and let me know what you get. All right, now we're moving to the last big topic of chapter 21 here. All right, our last big topic for the chapter is the stork enamine synthesis. All right, up to this point, we can say we now know that doubly stabilized enolates can serve as Michael donors. It's important to point out that regular enolates do not serve as Michael donors. Enolates are not stable enough to function as Michael donors. However, this professor at Columbia University, his name was Dr. Stork, all right, he developed a method for transformation in, when, in which the ketone is gonna be converted into an enamine, 
all right, by treating it with a secondary amine, all right, and then much like enolates, enamines are also nucleophilic at the alpha position, all right, but enamines do not possess a negative charge like enolates, and therefore, enamines are less reactive than enolates, and by that standard, enamines are going to be effective Michael donors, and they can participate in Michael reactions when there is a Michael acceptor that it is being treated with. So ultimately, our goal is to take the ketone, convert it into an enamine. All right, how do we do this? With a, by treating it with a secondary amine, and then we can do further treatment. All right, so after we formed our enamine, we can do a Michael addition. All right, this process, this whole process is called Stork enamine synthesis, the three steps, all right, to help you remember, Formation of an enamine, Michael addition, hydrolysis. Let's see this in play with this question right here. This problem, this problem wants us to do the following. All right. It is telling us, hey, use a stork enamine synthesis. Show how you would accomplish this transformation. All right. We're going from A. We're going from this to this. All right. Now. Right at this point here, we're, we want to break this right here, all right? This group right here is something that we want to add to this original ketone, okay? How are we going to do this? All right, this is just a single, right? This is just a single carbonyl here. If we deprotonate it, it's not going to form some doubly stabilized enolate that we can then do a normal Michael reaction with, all right? So we're going to have to do a first preliminary step all right, this is what stork enamine tells us, all right? You have this carbonyl. If you were to form an enolate, right, it's not doubly stabilized, so you can't do your normal, normal Michael, addition, uh, Michael addition reaction. You first want to convert it to an enamine, all right? How do we convert it to an enamine? We just treat it with a secondary amine and some acid, all right? What is that going to do to our starting material? It's going to give us something that looks like this, an enamine. We've talked about enamines in previous chapters before. They look like this. All right. Now what we can do is we can take this enamine and it, it can give us this final product by treating it with whatever this second group is. All right. We're going to draw what the second group is really quickly. And then we're going to make one slight modification to it. All right, the slight modification is this needs to be a Michael acceptor. So we need to have alpha beta unsaturation here. All right, so this with some acid to then do hydrolysis. So one, two will give us this final product here. All right, this is the last topic of this chapter. I have a two more pages here just to summarize everything that we've learned. All right, to put into play how you can do interconversion. All right. Um, of all the processes that we've learned, all right, we've covered Dickman cyclization, acetoacetic ester synthesis, heating those up to get carboxylic acid derivatives, alkylation, acylation, alpha halogenation, Michael addition. You can see all of these here labeled, all right, in this process where you're starting off here with just a ketone, an unsymmetrical one, all right, and you can follow several of these processes. All right, and I've labeled each one of these for you. So you can start to put these processes together. All right, you can see the flow of synthesis, all right, from one starting material to, an, to another. And really, I have this final page here too that does the same thing because I think putting these together really helps you visualize, all right, that if you're starting with a ketone, all right, how you can do alkylation, how you can do stork enamine to add things to your ketone, alpha halogenation to add a halogen group, aldyl group, so that this can react with itself to form this new aldyl addition reaction product. All right, how things can form enamines through stork uh, enamine reactions, all of this all put together in one flow for you to see. So I've done this. You can use this as a reference by all means, and hopefully it will help you see the flow of all these reactions that we have learned. All right. As an ending point, we're going to do one more synthesis problem for good measure. Okay. 
All right, we're going to do this one. We're going to propose an efficient synthesis. This is going to help us put all the pieces together. All right, we're starting from this. We want to end with this product. All right, we're going to make note of everything that's changed from starting material to end product here, and we're going to figure this out together. All right, we're going to go ahead and figure this out together. How are we going to propose an efficient synthesis where we start with this material and end up with this more elaborate product if you will all right so this transformation we're starting with a carbonyl all right this carbonyl is preserved we have this alpha beta unsaturation that's not preserved instead we've added two things to both sides all right so what we can do first all right what we can do as a first step is actually add something to the beta position here all right, we can add something to the beta position and we can add something to the alpha position. All right. So what this means is this can be achieved. All right. This can be achieved by treating the alpha beta unsaturated ketone with first. We've talked about this lithium dimethyl, right? Because we're adding a methyl group here. We can treat it with lithium dimethyl cuprate and install a methyl group there. And what that will is generate an enolate that can quickly be treated, all right, with benzyl iodide to install this benzyl group, all right? Let me show you what that means. All right, we could first treat it with lithium dimethyl cuprate. All right, we've seen the ethyl version of this where we were able to add ethyl groups to the beta version, all right? What that happens, what happens here is right you end up adding a methyl group here but you have an enolate that you can treat further with this group attached to some sort of halide that can function as a leaving group like and then you therefore install it here so the two sets of reagents you need is this and this and you can install both of these groups through synthesis pathway all right let's do one more let's do b and i'll leave the other two for you to do all right just so we can get more practice in here in this session all right one more for good measure let's do b but let me erase this so we have room to do b all right fantastic we're starting with this material all right it has this carbon this carbonyl group it's an aldehyde all right, and then this alpha beta unsaturation, what we want to end up with, all right, is something that looks like this. We've lost the carbonyl group here. We instead have this primary alcohol, all right? Primary alcohol, a new methyl group attached here and a new methyl group attached here. How are we going to do this? Well, first, let's install two methyl groups, right? We have this alpha beta um alpha beta uh, unsaturation all right let's add to the beta position first a methyl group we know how to do this right um lithium dimethyl cuprate will do that and then again we can treat it with an, another alkyl halide to add a methyl group to the alpha position we did the same thing here in a all right we treated first with this to add the methyl group to the beta position. Then we can automatically treat with another methyl group to add it to the alpha position. We could do that with methyl iodide, right? Because then the iodide or chlorine, whatever group you want to have here, whatever halide you want to have here can function as a leaving group. What we get from this step is, oh, no, my page is frozen. There we go. What we get from this step is we've added a methyl here. We've added a methyl here. Now what we need is to convert this group right here to a primary alcohol. We know how to do this. We're gonna have to squeeze our brain. Okay, we've learned about a really strong, a really good reducing agent that can take this aldehyde, convert it to a primary alcohol. This reducing agent is lithium, aluminum, hydride, and water. All right, this will convert this aldehyde group. All right, reduction is achieved by this lithium aluminum highlight. Uh, aluminum hydride and then the followed by a water workup for this hydrogen all right so that is how you would proceed with this synthesis all right i will leave c and d up for you to accomplish good luck let me know if you have any questions at all happy studying and have a beautiful day